Hi, and welcome to the second edition of Ask Me Anything, where you, the audience, gets to ask a subject matter expert here at TSA. And today we have Chris Shelton. Chris, thank you for being here with us. Good morning. Could you tell us a little bit about what you do with TSA? You bet. So I run the Canine Training Center down in San Antonio, Texas, which is on Lackland Air Force Base, and we train all of the canines for all of the TSA employees that you see in the airports with dogs, and TSA also enters into an agreement with a lot of law enforcement agencies across the country that we train their dogs and people, too, at the Canine Training Center. So when we talk about dogs or canines, I'm sure everybody gets excited. I can't imagine you entering Thanksgiving dinner without a thousand questions about your job and the dogs. So what kind of breed do you guys normally use for training? So we found some breeds that work very well and they're very common to the public. A lot of the working dog breeds, German Shepherds, Belgian Malinois, uh, golden labs, retrievers, those types of dogs. And it's not so much the breed specific reason that we pick them, it's the requirements of the dog that we need, their personalities, size requirements, health requirements, and the ability to do the job. So how do you guys come up with the puppy? Are they puppies when they come to the program? So TSA buys its dogs at least 18 months old is what we prefer, 18 to 24 months old. So the dog's got a little bit of maturity on it and we're confident that it can do the job that we're gonna train it to do and then move into the operational environment. So you're saying training. Yes. So what happens to um, the stubborn puppies or dogs that don't make the cut? So most of the dogs that we enter into our training program make it, but there is a percentage, 10 to 15%, that do not make it through training. But we've got really good relationships across the country with different agencies that are also looking for working dogs. These dogs were bred and purchased to work, so we try to get them into another agency where their personality may fit a little bit better than TSA. For those dogs that don't fit with TSA or another agency, we potentially adopt those out to families to make sure the dogs get a good home. But fortunately, we're able to get most of the dogs into another agency. So where does the naming part come? Do you guys name them during training or is that once they start the job, they come with a name. What is the process? So them? right now, the dogs that we buy from the vendors within the United States are named already when we get them. But TSA is looking to re-institute uh, an initiative that we did several years ago where we will name the dogs after 9-11 uh, victims in honor of those folks. Oh, that's amazing. Yes. So the other day, I was watching, um, actually, I was skimming through the Amazon Prime movies. And sometimes you spend more time trying to find a movie than actually sit and watch a movie. Right. And I came across Turner and Hooch. <laughs> Are you a fan? I am a fan. I, I like dogs, so any movie that really highlights dogs, I'm a fan of. And Tom Hanks. Right. But so how does one get partnered up with a canine? So when the students come in, we already have the dog selected for that class, but we don't have the dog selected for the students yet. So we'll ask the students some questions that are important to make sure that partnership's successful. How many other dogs they have at home? Do they have small children at home? We try to get a picture of what the dog's home life will look like because it's very important in the relationship between the handler and the dog. So once we uh, talk to the handlers and look at the dogs, um, then we'll try to make a pair that's going to be successful. And if for whatever reason during training it's not, we will make uh, changes to make sure that the handler and the canine are a good fit because it's an important part of the. Um, so you're saying you 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 check the home life for the dog and if it seems do. a good fit. So you're saying the handlers are able to take the dog home with them every night. They are. So the TSA handlers develop that bond with their canine not only at work to do the mission that TSA does, but also to take the dog home and it becomes part of their family. It is a working dog, so they try not to make it too much of a home a pet, for lack of a better term. Yeah, I was going to ask that. So were you ever a handler at any point? I was. I was a handler in the police department years ago, and you just have to keep that balance between work life and personal life. But, you know, the dogs in TSA, because we do bring them out into the public and they are interacting with the public, we want them to be sociable. So it's an important part of their uh, day. Yeah, day. it seems like it would be so hard right. to um, not get attached to your partner slash friend that you're spending 24 hours, exactly. seven days a week. So how do you separate the two? How uh, does your family not get attached to 
I think they do get attached, and the handler gets very attached because of all the time that you're referring to. You just have to realize that the dog is a working dog, so you just can't, I guess the term I'm looking for, spoil the dog too much. So you need to make sure the dog's having fun, it's healthy, that it's integrated into your work and life balance, but that you just don't spoil the dog to a point where it doesn't want to work anymore. Right, so, so dogs love praise and yes. attention and um, comfort. Correct. So what is the reward for the working dog? So the dogs work for, you know, you and I work for a paycheck, obviously, and the dogs, uh, their paycheck would be the praise that they get from the handler and the reward, we call it, which is a toy. Sometimes it's a tennis ball. Sometimes it's a, a rubber Kong. Some of the dogs like, and it's, it's canine specific. Some dogs like different toys. So that's one of the things we do at the CTC is determine which toy the dog would like to work for the most, and then the handler rewards that canine with that toy. So it's kind of a mix of praise and the reward. So do the canines have a, a special diet that they have to maintain throughout the duration of their, their working years? Is it gluten-free? <laughs> Is it, you know, homemade chicken and rice? I mean, we want to make sure these dogs stay healthy. So what are some of the things that the handlers are in charge of doing? So we do, and the dogs get very excellent health care from the time, uh, not only are they raised, but from the time TSA gets them throughout their career. But their diet is one of the things that we look at. Uh, because they're working dogs, and we're asking them to work quite a bit, they're on a high-protein diet. But the vets monitor not only the type of food, but the amount of food on a regular basis and make adjustments as necessary. And then if a dog needs to get on a special diet, like potentially a gluten-free diet, the vets will make that change for that specific dog. So you listed a few of the uh, most frequent dogs you normally train, but mm -hmm. what are the top breeds that TSA uses? Uh, right now we use uh, German short-haired pointers. We see a lot of those. Golden Labs, uh, Golden Retrievers, German Shepherds, Belgian Malinois, and uh, that would probably be the top ones that we use. So how many hours um, does each canine have to go through in order for them to graduate and actually work in an airport? So their school with the handler for TSA is a 12-week school for the handlers and the dogs that you see in the airport uh, screening passengers and then for our law enforcement partners they go through a 10-week school so a little bit shorter. So these dogs are looking for different things if they're working for law enforcement and for TSA, correct? So it's not something that what is the canine working for TSA looking for compared to law enforcement? So TSA does all explosives canines, so even the dogs that are working for TSA are looking for explosive odors, things that could potentially cause a threat, and then they're looking for the same thing for our law enforcement partners, so they're all explosive detection canines. So in order for them to detect explosives, you guys are actually testing with real explosives? We use live explosives in our training for the canines because we want them to uh, work operationally like they do in training. I'm asking as if I don't know, but <laughs> I think what you don't know, I don't think we discussed this, is that I was actually a decoy oh, at okay. one of the local airports, so right. I was able to go through the process, the testing nice. process, which is amazing. But right. not just anybody can participate as a decoy, correct? Correct. We try to keep that somewhat controlled because there are a lot of moving parts to that and to your point that we use live explosives. So we, right. we try to select those people that right. uh, we know are going to do a good job for the canine. And these canines train daily. They're training every day to keep their skills sharp and to work for those rewards that we talked about. Right. And I was surprised. I mean, it's a little nerve wracking. So they strap you up with, with the explosives. Yes. And I don't know if it was actually heating up or it was just my subconscious saying, you have an explosive on you. But what was interesting is that the dogs weren't, you can't expect them to be aggressive or attack if correct. they detect something, correct? Yes, that's one of the things we make sure in our training, and I mentioned it earlier, we, we bring the dogs out into the public in our mission, so we have to make sure that the dog is working to find the explosive but not be overly intrusive into the passengers that it's going to come in contact with. So what we do is a, a response that alerts the handler that the dog is found explosive odor, but correct, not be aggressive or try to bite or scratch or anything at the odor. So um, how, what kind of skills can a, does a handler need to have in order to be able to have a partner, a dog partner? 
So our handlers are very good at what they do. They need to be physically fit. It's obviously a very physical job. Um, chasing the canine around all day is not a lot of, uh, it's not easy. They also need to be able to multitask, so they're watching a lot of different things at one time. They need to watch the public, the canine, all of the potential concerns, um, safety, all of the different things that we would ask a handler to do. So multitasking is a skill that the handlers definitely need to nail down. And the ability to read the change of behavior on the canines in the event the canine indicates on something. So you're relying a lot of body language and chemistry and um, so how long does the partnership normally last for? So we try to keep a handler and a canine together throughout their career if possible uh, because of that bond and that uh, relationship that they build not only from the initial stages of training but through their deployment. So normally what we try to do is not make swaps within that pair unless it's necessary um, for whatever reason, sometimes the, we may need to replace a canine or a handler may leave the program, so there is some moving around of the um, different pieces of the team, but for the most part, they stay together throughout their career. So on average, what, are, what would you say are the good working years for a canine, or does it just depend on the canine? It, it averages on the canine, but on average, you know, if we get a dog between 18 and 24 months, the dog usually can work till about nine or ten years old um, and our big thing is we want to make sure that the dog's happy and healthy and working uh, in a way that makes it a good asset for TSA but usually nine or ten although TSA does have some dogs out there that are 11 12 years old right now that are doing a great job so what happens to them after their 9 10 13th year of work so usually um, Back to that relationship that we talked about, if they've been with the handler for that long, the handler has the opportunity, if the dog retires, to keep that dog with their family as a retired TSA canine, and that's normally what happens in those situations. And I invite you all to ask questions, so if you have any questions to our good friend here, Chris, on canines or handlers, feel free to ask away. I forgot to ask this one This one question. So what happens to the puppies that don't make it through training? So because we buy our dogs, um, like I mentioned, 18 to 24 months old, those are the dogs that will go to the other agencies potentially. So we don't see the puppies. TSA used to have a, a puppy program years ago, but we uh, went away from that because there were available resources from other parts to get the dogs, other places in the country. So you mentioned that you were a handler once upon a time. Back. Do you ever miss it? I do miss it. It's a great job. You know, that relationship you build with the canine and the importance of the mission just makes it a really good job. And I think our TSA handlers feel the same way. We interact with them not only through training but throughout their careers from the Canine Training Center. And it's just, you know, rarely do you not hear from a handler that they, uh, they don't love what they do. Well, I was going to say, it's, it can't feel like a Monday on a Monday <laughs> if you're going into work with your trusty companion slash, you know, best friend, hopefully working right. partner so I would say so you're saying that um, so what would you say is a key role for your role within the program so my role within the program is supporting the men and women out at the canine training center at Lackland Air Force Base for their training mission there's over over a hundred employees out there that uh, probably the most dedicated group of folks I've ever had the opportunity to work with they love what they do they're very passionate like a lot of people in the canine program and they make sure that the product that the canine training center sends out into the field is a solid product to meet the TSA mission is there a reason why it has to be in San Antonio? No, the, the program has a lot of history with the military working dog program on Lackland Air Force Base. So before the program uh, was uh, fell under the auspice of TSA, it was with the FAA years and years ago. So that program's been growing on Lackland with the military working dog program as our partners since 1972. So it's got a long history on that location. Um, TSA has a separate mission from the DOD, but we share a lot of the resources on Lackland, and I believe it makes it a pretty good partnership. So what is one thing that you would like to share to the audience that maybe sometimes we don't take into consideration about the dogs? Uh, I think it's important to realize that the dogs are such a critical asset to the TSA mission and that uh, we get asked quite a lot about the dogs and 
um, their personalities and do they like what they do and I think that's one of the things I always like to highlight and you you probably notice it when you see the dogs out in the airports how happy they are you know we, we base our whole program off the quality health of the dogs and their uh, ability to do what we're asking them to do so that that aspect of the canine is important to TSA so when people ask you know do the dogs like what they do you know I like highlighting the fact that it's a to them it's a game you know they're looking for their toy they're looking for the praise from their handler they enjoy what they do so we we utilize that not only in our training but in our deployment techniques to make sure that they're a good team so when you have a pet a pet dog um, and you have to go through physicals right how does one do that with your working dog? Do they have to have the same vet? Do they have to get different testing than your pet? So I, I would, guess, I would, I would assume. Yeah, that's a good question. So I, you know, the, the dogs in the TSA Canon program probably get seen by vets a lot more than your pet at home. Uh, regular checks are done on the canines. You know, on Lackland, we have a great relationship with the DOD Military Working Dog Hospital that takes care of the dogs when they're on Lackland. And then when they go into the field, the different locations have local vet support there. But the dogs are on a lot of, uh, you know, preventative medication to make sure that they stay healthy and then a lot of checkups following on that. Um, one of the reasons to go back to the point about being happy and healthy, it's just such an important part of the dogs performance that we make sure that the health checks are a big part of their regular regime. Absolutely. So how many working dogs does TSA currently have? TSA has over a thousand dogs in its program right now. Um, that's inclusive that's of amazing. the, that's a lot of canines. It sure is. <laughs> it's a lot of canines and it's a lot of dedicated people making sure that all of those uh, resources are used to support the mission, but it's a lot of dogs. On Lackland on any given day, we're training approximately 200 canines per day that we wow. have in training. So if, uh, if you ever get a chance to come down to San Antonio, you'll see there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of dogs in training. Yeah, that I never been to Texas, so <laughs> that's something I definitely would like to, I'm interested in checking out. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the canine adoption program? Is, is that related to the flunk outs? It, it is. Um, as I, I mean saying flunk outs, <laughs> I mean, it just it wasn't their calling, right? Yeah, and as I mentioned before, most of the dogs that don't make it through the TSA training process were able to repurpose with other agencies that we have uh, relationships with across the country. But on occasion, we do end up with dogs that will end up on our adoption list. Uh, luckily, uh, it's a pretty short list that we keep to do that, but we have placed canines with homes. Uh, it's a pretty extensive process, obviously, because we want to make sure that the canine's going to a good home, but it is one of the things that we will do if we have a dog that won't meet another mission. So, to our audience, if they're interested in adopting a dog from the program, are they able to? Is it open to the public? It is open to the public on the TSA iShare site. There is a link uh, to the program that g provides information and answers questions on the program. And uh, just to make sure I don't give false uh, hope, there's not a lot of dogs out there that are in that program or available. Oh, bummer. But it is open to the public in the event we do end up with a canine. And I'm sure we can find that, <coughs> that information. Uh, we'll yes. share the link for your awareness. Yes. Um, but we're wrapping things up. Okay, so is great. there anything else that you'd like to add before we go? No, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, TSA has a great canine program, and I always appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. So thank you for your time. No, it was a pleasure having you here. Right. Thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned for next time.